Now we are going to talk about security. It's much more fun because now Alice and Bob will be a little bit more paranoid. That makes the whole scenario much more interesting. And we are going to introduce a, a third character, an eavesdropper called Eve. So we will then be very careful about specifying the, the scenario that uh, we are going to consider. So we will assume that Alice and Bob, two good guys, they want to establish a cryptographic key. Remember, it has to be truly random and it has to be secure. So now Alice and Bob are miles away from each other, but they have, um, so I just say, this is a location for Alice and miles, miles, miles away, somewhere there, there's Bob. Now they can communicate using what cryptographers called um, a public channel. So that means um, it's, it's kind of like a broadcasting channel that everyone can listen to this channel, but nobody can modify the channel. So it's like uh, broadcasting a message over radio or putting an advert in a newspaper. So that means that Alice and Bob can um, broadcast messages. So this way they can, they can communicate uh, in public. So anyone can listen to this communication. Now, the, we shall assume that um, this bad, bad, bad eavesdropper is somewhere in between them and uh, is trying to fool them when Alice and Bob start the key distribution procedure. So ideally, Alice and Bob, after learning about quantum physics, you know, after being fluent with quantum techniques, both on the theory and experimental side, obviously they attended those lectures uh, in Oxford, um, they, they decided to go for a quantum key distribution. But, um, and, so, and then they identify an external source that uh, is sending what looks like pairs of entangled qubits to them. So we can imagine that um, Alice and Bob are receiving qubits. In fact, you know, they are not so sure that, uh, whether those qubits really come from a, a proper legal um, trusty source. So they want to be a little bit careful. So they, they do assume that it could be actually an eavesdropper, Eve, that is preparing those qubits for them. So you can think about Eve preparing a pair of qubits and giving one qubit to Alice, another qubit to Bob, just sending one qubit to Alice, another qubit to Bob. And uh, the eavesdropper repeats this process many times. Now, Alice and Bob then think, okay, what shall we do given that we receive qubits, we can perform any measurement of our choice on those qubits, and we can also communicate in public. Is there a way to figure out that those qubits, for example, come from a genuine entangle source rather than they were prepared by Eve. They, they actually don't care that much whether they were prepared by Eve or anyone, as long as, as uh, the eavesdropper doesn't know the outcome of the measurement that they are going to uh, use for, for the key. So, so that, you know, it could be, they say, fine, you know, Eve, prepare those qubits for us. But uh, if you know nothing about the outcomes of our measurement, at the end of the day, we'll be also quite happy about it. So therefore, I would like you to consider two scenarios. So Alice and Bob, well, they're, they're kind of two extreme scenarios, in fact. So one is that Alice and Bob uh, think this way. Well, if it is a genuine source of entangled uh, photons, for example, so that's, um, that's say, scenario number one. So then the state generated by the source will be of the form 1 over square root of 2, 0, 0, plus 1, 1. And an eavesdropper that prepared that state doesn't really know anything about um, the bit values um, that uh, possibly encoded in the qubit. So in other words, it's, it's not entangled in any way with the, with the two qubits that goes to Alice and Bob. So we say, uh, well, let me just put this uh, tensor some state of uh, Eve's or eavesdropper's device. So that's scenario number one. That's kind of a good scenario because in this case, eavesdropper doesn't really have any information. So suppose Alice and Bob are going to measure qubits in, in the regular computational basis. So they're going to measure Z observable. So in this case, if, if Alice and Bob agree to measure Z 
um, all the way through. If this is the case, then it's fine because they will get a random sequence of zeros and ones, but perfectly correlated. You can see from this expression here that the two possible outcomes if they perform the Z measurement are either zero, zero or one, one with equal probability. And uh, Eve is completely factored out from, from any else. She wouldn't know whether it was zero, zero or one, one in this particular scenario. But then there's another scenario in which uh, Eve is really trying to learn whether the outcome of the Z measurement will be zero or one for Alice and Bob. In this case, she can prepare the state in which she entangles her own device or the preparation device or whatever probe, whatever she has, and create a state which is of this form. Uh, zero, zero, tensor E naught plus one, one, tensor E1. Now assume that uh, E naught and E1 are orthogonal in this case. So if you look at the state, um, Eve has knowledge whether Alice and Bob, um, what kind of values they register when they perform the measurement. To make it uh, a little bit more clear, perhaps, it's, it's worth to look at the, perhaps, the density operators, reduced density operators of the two qubits. So we are just interested now about the states of the two qubits alone. And you know how to do it. You have to trace over Eve. So what we are going to do is just look at this state, then look at the density operator associated with this state, traced over e, Eve. And if you do it, so in, in this case, you will get the state of two qubits, which is a, a pure state, right? So it's a projector on this maximally entangled state. And in a matrix form, I'll just write it as 1, 1, 1, 1, and there are zeros everywhere. So this is actually the state of the two qubits in the first scenario. And well, in this case, um, tracing is a, is a little bit more, is, is less trivial, but uh, easy enough, I hope, for you by now. Um, and uh, when you do this, and if the two states are orthogonal to each other, you will get the following density matrix of two qubits. So if Alice and Bob test for eavesdropping or trying to generate the key by performing Z measurements all the way through on the qubits, then it's not good enough because this way they cannot distinguish between the two scenarios. So you can see the second scenario corresponds to the situation and just this density matrix can be also written as half projector on zero, zero plus half projector on one, one. So it corresponds to the situations where Alice has some sort of a random number generator that generates uh, two qubits in state zero with probability half, and then of course two qubits in state one with probability half. So Alice generates those two qubits say in state zero and sends one qubit to Alice and another qubit to Bob. So in which case Alice knows exactly that once they choose to perform Z measurements, uh, Alice and Bob will get uh, identical outcome and that will be zero, zero. So she knows exactly the outcome of the measurement. And also, you know, if she prepares one, one, she also knows that and they will get one, one. So you can see that clearly that in both cases, those, those matrices have um, diagonal elements which are identical and the Z measurements corresponds to uh, projections on, 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 um, on either sort of zero, zero or one, one states. And uh, so surely this kind of strategy is not good enough for Alice and Bob because they can be fooled that they have identical secret binary strings, but they don't because it's, if, they, if all they do is just to carry on performing the measurement in the computational basis, they will certainly get the truly random outcomes, but they will not be able to distinguish between those two preparations here that uh, Eve can carry on, right? So the one would be just fine. That's exactly what they are after this preparation here. Because in this case, Eve is disentangled from the two qubits. 
but it could be the second perforation as well, right? So, and uh, and if you look at the density matrix, uh, the diagonal elements are the same, corresponding to the measurements in the Z basis. Um, so that's mm, that's not good. This kind of test will not tell you about the difference between the two preparations. But then you just look and say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, those two density operators are different, so there must be a test that can tell you the difference. Well done. Yes, there is a test um, that will um, pick up the difference between the two density operators. Clearly, they are different, so there will be different statistical predictions if we choose the right kind of measurements. It just happens that measuring z, 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 z in z basis is not good enough. So, okay, so the next stage is to find a good test.